of our conversation tonight we want to make heads or tails of this situation why it has drawn on for so long and we might point fingers at the economic times but this seems to have been happening for over a decade plus and we have in studio um, the, uh, voices that are going to shed more light on this matter I'll start off by introducing uh, the guest in studio with me Simon Gishuki who is the Secretary General Association of Public Supplies thank you so much for making the time to join us we also have the controller of budget who's joining us via um, uh, 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 not via zoom but uh, with uh, we have a camera sent to her earlier on so she's joining us live from Nairobi Margaret Nyakango we also have Kakamega uh, governor Fernandez Baraza who's joining us also live all the way from Kakamega and they're representing pockets of people who have been represented in that particular story who have a say in this particular issue and of course will help us understand why we are having businesses crumbling in even though we are having very entrepreneurial spirits behind the endeavors of these tenders and, and giving business to, uh, doing business with government, but of course suffering for it. Unfortunately, as we have been told, some have lost their lives to depression, some have committed suicide, and some are suffering uh, very debilitating health issues because of this particular problem. Now, thank you so much. I'd like to start with you here in studio. You are some, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry, Simon um, Gishuki. Um, just paint a picture for us because you are coming from the business side of things. Explain to our viewers what it's like to be uh, to give your all, to give your savings, or even take a loan and then channel it to a government entity such as the county government or even the national government, and ho in hopes of getting benefits. And then suddenly you're having to spend years on end waiting. First of all, thank you for having me, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this is amazing. Uh, we, we all must appreciate that yeah. uh, over years the government has been putting effort in ensuring that everyone who has entrepreneurial skills can set up a business, can bring up the idea, and supply whether it's the national government, county government, the parastatos, and the likes. And once you do that, you're looking at two things. You're either supplying government with services, or you're supplying goods. Mm -hmm. If you look at our Kenyan budget, and uh, l l let's put it at whatever, three trillion, one, once you reduce the, the loans mm -hmm. and the salaries that we will pay to the public servants, every other money will be either spent to development or services here and there. Yes. So we're looking at a huge amount of money that will be tendered to. And Kenyans are very entrepreneurial. Yes. So they will set up companies, they set up businesses mm -hmm. with the sole aim of providing goods. A very small chunk of businesses are what we would call uh, bad businesses. A huge chunk are honest earning businesses yes. that employ hundreds of thousands of Kenyans. These are guys who supply consultancy services, supply goods in government institutions, and offer consultancy services. These are people who went to school, got the necessary uh, experience yes. and set up shop mm -hmm. and decided now instead of being employed or got employed over time let me set up a business to offer services to governments mm. and they do so in the belief that there's one thing that is always constant that the government of Kenya or the county government or the parastatals are going concern so you don't supply because you know the PS or the CS or the chief officer or the governor no you supply because a tender was floated and you could offer the service, and you qualified, and you offered the service. Yes. It didn't matter who was the governor. It didn't matter who was the PS. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter who was the head of state. It didn't matter who was the CEO of that parastato. But you knew the moment you supply in good faith, you'll also be paid in good faith. What people fail to realize is in a third world country, the biggest buyer is the government. Yes. That basically means that even here where we are, the biggest advertiser is government. For sure. So should they not pay standard, standard will not complain to the private sector, they'll complain to the government of the day. Mm -hmm. So what we look at every single day when we, we when go to the office is people honestly do a living supplying government mm -hmm. and they don't get paid. Yeah. And if you look at the reasons left, right and center, you'll actually realize this resource boil down to bad governance. Okay. To the people who've been given the powers. Mm -hmm. 
and 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 allow me to comment this because when I saw who else will be on the panel, I I, I was I, I was actually very impressed because you 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 I wish it was another governor because His Excellency runs one of the most efficient mm -hmm. counties. They pay on time. Yes. If it was another governor, I wouldn't mention which county. I would have actually asked them <laughs> point blank why exactly are not paying. Okay. But uh, my friend there pays on time. Mm -hmm. So does the control of budget. They do it on time. Yeah. But the biggest problem we have with these spending bills is one. We need to actually embrace the fact that they are there. Mm -hmm. And the control of budget will not allow you to pay unless it was budgeted for. So the first question we need to ask ourselves, why haven't we ever made it as a fast charge of budgets done either by counties mm -hmm. or by national government? Mm -hmm. okay. Because no government will come in and say, let me own up this, unless it's a fast charge. Mm -hmm. So as an association, we are alive to the fact that His Excellency the President has agreed to set up a co uh, the committee. We are hoping that it actually starts work. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, we are hoping that when they agree to put it up, they, they'll actually set up the right, the right amount and push the right uh, laws in parliament so that it can actually be a charge. Right. Known, uh, known as the same way we have a roads budget, now we have a pending bills budget. Okay. Only then shall people take responsibility. Okay, so in your view, it's a matter of bad government, governance as well as a policy issue. Because if these are put right, then everything will be streamlined. The third thing I would add yeah. would be personal liability. Okay. Because I, I think at some point they put the fact that when you get a job, there's someone who is liable mm -hmm. to ensure that you supplied, why weren't you paid? Mm -hmm. Do we ever hold these people into account? Do you ever sit down and ask, you, you are the PS at this time, or you are the chief officer, or you are the CEO, mm -hmm. why exactly didn't you pay? Yes. But remember when today I'm the CEO of a parastato and I leave work, and I leave, whoever comes on board now starts fresh. Do they really want to take up the risk? No. Mm -hmm. But should we hold the person in office? personally accountable, yeah. we'll have sorted a lot of mess. Okay, I'd like to bring on Governor Fernandez Barraza into the conversation. Uh, you have been lauded as coming from a county that is very di diligent when it comes to payments, but we have had in the story that we heard earlier on uh, uh, county governments being named and shamed for not being quite as diligent when it comes to these uh, payments. And when the devolution happened, there was a lot of jubilation surrounding the possibilities of being able to do business with county governments and make money and of course keep the entrepreneurial spirit up what would you say about the situation of the piling up of bills so far and coming from the county government perspective what is the problem uh, first and foremost I want to agree with uh, Simon that um, our pending bills will form the first charge on matters uh, payment and then number two that uh, counties should actually be a going concerned irrespective of the transition uh, those two principles are very crucial, and that is why uh, when I took over as the second governor of Kakamega uh, last year in, um, um, in September, uh, the first thing I did was to uh, quickly have an audit of the pending bills. Uh, that was 1.2 billion uh, Kenya shillings. And um, I want to confirm that um, by end of um, uh, June, I'd already cleared the pending bills which I'd inherited uh, from my predecessor, uh, Governor Paranya. Um, the new pending bill that we have in Kakamega are amounting to 1.4 billion Kenya shillings. That is now for the last financial year. And so far, with the disbursement that we received for the month of August, I've already started um, making specific allocations. So out of the amount that we received, uh, 200 million, we have already allocated and addressed the pending bill that we received. That is now, uh, from 1.4, we are talking about 1.2 billion. So the challenge that we've had in counties is uh, during transition, uh, normally the new governors will come in, and of course they'll want to do an audit of the pending bills, uh, which is uh, acceptable, but the audit process uh, takes too long uh, to be finalized. And that now leads to delay. And some of the audits which we have realized, uh, you'll see pending bills which have been verified are maybe 50% of whatever that um, the governors inherited. So it becomes a problem, especially for those which are rejected. That's number one. And the second challenge of uh, the pending bills accumulation is uh, where we've had systematic delay 
uh, in uh, release of money by the national treasury. Uh, the last financial year, we got all the money. However, the disbursement for the month of, um, of June actually came on the last day. And that is why as the chair of finance, economic planning and um, uh, 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 economic planning affairs of COG, we requested um, that if means should be extended, the closure should be extended by two weeks uh, in order to allow the counties to absorb the money, at least for the uh, delivery that was done on the last day. We were only given uh, one week. And this is a situation where, um, like for those people who drink, you are given uh, 25 crates of beer and you are told, can you take in five minutes? So what we are saying here is um, when we have the closure with the financial year, let's have like two weeks uh, for absorption of that amount. That will help us address the challenge of pending bills. And then, of course, the, the other issue is about underperformance. Uh, on the on-source revenue. Uh, during budgeting, of course, um, most counties are very enthusiastic. Uh, you, you, you know a budget for on-source revenue. By the end of the year, when you underperform, definitely the amount which had been uh, budgeted for the pending bills, or rather for the, for the payments, now will lead to a pending bill. So you realize that those three elements will really uh, compound the problem of pending bills. And that is why we need to have a systematic solution. Uh, for example, going uh, the route of automation, of requisitions, and the control of budget. When you do that, then it will be clear that pending bills will be given uh, the first charge and the challenge will be addressed. Also with the systematic release of uh, the treasury uh, disbursements by exchequer. Out that ambitiousness when it comes to trying to get, uh, you know, monies from the county. But then Kerry does not take all of it. And also there's another element of that um, gap that we've heard from uh, accounts of people who are doing business with uh, county governments that have not gotten yet uh, their payments. When they're doing business with one county government, then there's a change over. For example, in your case, you're able to take up from the previous uh, government and ensure that they are paid even as you continue. What is it that is making this happen? Perhaps you could give us a clue from when it comes to the perspective of the other county governments when, where we are having suppliers saying, when a new county government's get into power, you can just forget about your money. Governor Fernandez, can you hear me? The audit. Yes, I can hear you very well. Yes. Uh, what, I've, what I've learned from my colleagues in other counties, um, when they inherited the pending bills, the first thing was to set up a committee to do an audit and verification process. Right. And what came out, uh, I don't want to mention the specific counties, is um, that some of those uh, pending bills were not payable and that is why you will find if there is um, a process which has taken place on verification and you realize that some of the bills are not payable uh, definitely um, those specific uh, counties will only settle uh, the bills which have been um, are verified by a committee uh, so maybe going forward mm -hmm. at the time of implementing uh, the project. What we need is the entire supply chain to be fully documented so that when we have a transition, uh, the documents and the process is, um, is, 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 is audit, uh, audit proof eh? to avoid a situation where you have pending bills that have been presented, but there are no uh, specified documentation right from, let's say, the LPO, the GRNs, the inspection reports. So if all that is done during a project implementation or service delivery, it will become very easy. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do, like for example in Kakamega, I've made sure that the issue of document control is given priority. So that even if I leave office, whoever comes after me, after 10 years, 
will be able to find documents are in place and then they can actually not have a problem of settling the pending bills. Okay. So documentation is crucial uh, and you can even go further and document and automate the documentation process through electronic document management system. That will address to a larger extent the challenge of pending bills uh, settlement. Okay, thank you very much, Governor. I'd like to bring into the conversation Margaret Nyakango, who's the controller of budget. When you hear these uh, sentiments coming out of our other guests, what do you make of it given the magnitude of the pending bills? Are you worried about this? Uh, thank you very much uh, for having me. So when I hear, um, especially the, the governor especially has spoken very well. Yes. And uh, the, the reasons are known. Now, my experience this far, hello? Yes, go ahead, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, my experience is that for a long time now, there are suppliers who have suffered because they did not know the processes very well. Over and above everything, we have suppliers who are given verbal orders, so to say. And when they are given these verbal orders, it means that the records have not been processed through the, the IFMIS, the system that processes uh, procurement and payments at the Treasury. So when you look at the large figures that we have, don't be surprised that a large proportion of, of that figure is ineligible. And what we mean by ineligible is that uh, these uh, invoices or, or, uh, or claims, so to say, have certain shortcomings which make them uh, uh, unable to be settled, if I may just put it simply that way. And uh, you will find that when the audits have been done in the past, uh, a lot of those committees that were set up at the county level have refused that they will not pay those bills because they don't comply with the minimum requirements for payment. So that has left us with quite a big problem on our hands. So we, we have the little that has been called eligible. For instance, as of 30th June, we had a figure of just about 36 billion that was eligible. The rest of the bills, unfortunately, have not passed the test. So the Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council has uh, recommended another committee which is going to look at these ineligible pending bills and try to make sense of them. Unfortunately, some of the counties have been telling us th that they have removed those figures from their records, so they don't want to consider them anymore. And that will be a very unfortunate state of affairs. So uh, from where I sit, I do the monitoring and I also do the enforcement so what happens is that once the counties have audited the pending bills, they then give us the list of eligible bills and a payment plan. Then when I'm releasing the funds, I ensure that those uh, payment plans are being followed when they come for the rest of, of the other payments. So in short, I, I have to say that the, the, the issue of pending bills is a very worrying scenario, both at the national level and at the county level, and all our efforts have got to move towards resolving 
this uh, this situation. Okay, now let's uh, talk about something else that is that allocations that are given to county governments and then somehow uh, fail to go to suppliers, they go to other businesses that are being conducted by the county government. Speak to us about that and give us perspective. Of course, this hurts the suppliers that are waiting for their monies. Yes, it is a worrying situation because when I approve the requisitions, I normally have a list of the suppliers that are supposed to be paid. But every so often we get complaints from the suppliers saying they have not been paid, which means that once the money gets to the county level, they misapply it to other suppliers. This has been going on for quite a long time and a lot of the complaints that come to my office are about people who even know that they are going to be paid, but at the end of the day, they are told that uh, they, they won't get their money as yet. So there is an effort, there is an initiative now between my office, the National Treasury, and the Central Bank to get a, a process whereby we match all the payments that have been requisitioned to the internet banking details so that when the payment is made it is only on those requisitions that have been approved so this is at the tail end now although it is not yet operational so to say but it will be soon Simon, I'd like to bring you back into the conversation. We've talked about documentation, digitalization, and of course, first charge. You brought that up, and uh, Governor Fernandez <coughs> said that is an actually good idea. Um, there's also the matter of you hearing that uh, funds have been given, but then they're not getting to suppliers because you're representing hundreds and uh, possibly thousands of people who are waiting for monies for years. So from your point of view what does the how does that make you feel uh i, I think I, I i noted a couple of things mm. which I'll, I'll gladly address mm. one is the uh, ineligibility of the bills and i think one of the things we use uh, and i'll use this respectfully is saying that some suppliers are not eligible to be paid that implies they didn't know they didn't follow due process they didn't and, know and how basically to go about that it. exactly means yes then that when a county does the audit mm. and realizes out of a thousand suppliers, 300 are not eligible, have we had any of them going to EACC? Have we had any of them press charges under the DPP? Mm -hmm. Have we had any of them for the names to DCI? No. Mm -hmm. So technically, if we are to be honest, because I think one of the most important things about money and business is that we have to be honest. Mm. The reason why we audit these debts is because we don't trust the going concern concept of businesses. Yeah. It's only in government where you hear a new government comes in and audits businesses. You've never had it at KCB, you've never had it at Equity, you've never had it at a private company. Mm -hmm. You basically trust that people did their work. And if there's an issue, you have the right channels to get your money back. True. Most of the pending bills will be 30-40% unpaid. So are we, are we trying to have um, His Excellency the Governor saying mm -hmm. that 60% of the amount that had been paid is actually money the Kenyan government lost or the Kenyans lost. Mm -hmm. So we, we actually need to ask ourselves those questions yeah. because by the time I have a pending bill, I've gotten an amount paid, there's a balance unpaid. So when a county says they won't honor that final one, does it mean that the first one was actually a fraud? So why haven't they taken those suppliers to ESEC or to DCI? Because you have to be honest. But I'm also stuck on the matter of time. This is not happening for, has not been happening for one year, not two years, not three years. Are suppliers not going through the due process to make complaints? What's going on? One, of the, of, one of the fundamental principles of working with government mm. is that your money does not get lost. It will be paid. Yeah. You will push for payments and over time you don't get it paid. But you know, one day it will be paid. The first one was paid, the processes were done, everything was okay. Mm -hmm. So how comes that someone can come and tell you your last 30% is fraudulent? Mm -hmm. Does it mean the 70% was not? Number two, 
own source revenue is a good thing. Yeah. But then we have to sit ourselves and ask ourselves, what calculations do we use to determine our source revenue? Now, that is why we need to actually sit down and be honest. Mm -hmm. If a county declares 10 billion, who holds them into account that they'll actually achieve the 10 billion? Right. Because as Madame said, mm -hmm. if you don't get the 10 billion, it means that whatever was budgeted is automatically a pending bill. Yes. So we're even making our, our work so difficult. Real, realistic, because yeah. you've stated 10 billion, you can only collect 4 billion. So what you're doing, Madame, will be knowing you budgeted for 10, you can only achieve 4. So she basically wakes up every morning knowing that county will have pending bills at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Number three, government processes. We have the PPRA and we have institutions that train people in public procurement. The processes are well. No one is given a document, an award letter, mm -hmm. without a due process. The people to learn due process are the people employed by government. If I don't qualify for a tender, I don't get. It's yeah. a no-brainer. Yeah. If you qualified and you got the initial amount, it means the documentation was in order. Mm -hmm. That issue of saying digitization is a very good thing used in the third world to basically say we have inefficient processes, the ICT will come and cure. It doesn't. Any inefficient process, and that got I'm in that field, yeah. any inefficient process in whichever institution, government, private, the moment you digitize, you magnify, you, you magnify the inefficiency. Mm -hmm. So if we are saying that the sorting out and paying processes in Kenya is, is, is inefficient, then let's streamline that fast mm -hmm. before we digitize. Otherwise, we cannot run every time there's a crisis to say, let's digitize, we'll have sorted a crisis. No. Yeah. We are going to digitize inefficient processes. In doing so, we're going to magnify inefficiency. But the, the, the issue of, uh, Governor Fernandez spoke about um, documentation and the issue of moving from one government to the other. So when in, in, the, in the event that there's no proper digitization or rather no documentation, then some people fall through the cracks because the new government says, well, we don't know you. But let's look at it like this. Mm -hmm. Who, there, there's something the government introduced called the, uh, the accounting officers. Yeah. There are people who are actually civil servants. Mm -hmm. They are not elected officials who actually work day to day to ensure the government works. Mm -hmm. So in the event, then you're saying that these people were in office and these bills are ineligible, then why are they still in office? Mm -hmm. We've not had any county that said the entire accounting department was fraudulent. Let's do it with it. Mm -hmm. We are auditing and still retaining the same people. Now, going concern is a concept in finance. And my good friend knows that for a very long time, that whether it's government A or B, we can't keep doing audit for every bill that comes, what we need is to take responsibility mm -hmm. and agree that if there's anyone, and I think I'll be very happy that the county will take a supplier to court okay. and say you supplied fake equipment mm -hmm. and you got this money done. Okay. Out of the billions suppliers are requesting, you'll be very shocked that they are part payment pending. All right. Yes. So how possible is that? Now, Governor uh, Fernandez, I'd like to get your opinion on this. How possible is it for me, for example, to render services to the county of Kakamega without the proper documentation, without um, following due process, so much so that I would get to the point where I'm demanding for my monies, but I'm being told your papers are not in line, so to speak. How possible is that? And have you encountered this when you're dealing with suppliers? Uh, first and foremost, I want to loud my predecessor, uh, FCPA Weekly Fambeza Oparanya, because uh, he's one of the governors who put in place systems of accountability and checks and balances. Uh, we have not come across um, any supplier who was given a verbal order. Maybe that's why I didn't have a problem uh, on settling the pending bills that you inherited. And my my, my plea to uh, my brother, Simon, yes. as the chair of uh, suppliers, association of suppliers, please, you need to sensitize your suppliers that when you are given a verbal uh, tender, the possibility of being paid are remote so that people are sensitized on the proper documentation. For example, in Kakamega, we have uh, a template First, when a tender has been advertised, people will apply. Whoever uh, wins through uh, a, a fair process will get an award letter. And an award letter 
does not give you the authority of now delivering the service. After the award letter has begun, for example, if it's a, if it's a development project, right. you now have a contract uh, that you will discuss with my team on the deliverables. The contract is what will give you authority to go on the ground to start delivering. So that there is an entire supply chain of documentation. If it's supply of goods, then after you get an LPO, of course you'll deliver. The goods are received. Before then, there is an inspection committee. So the entire process. So what I'm just saying uh, to my brothers who may be having pending bills mm -hmm. are rising from being given verbal orders. Please, when you are given a verbal order, step back and say, wait a minute, how will I be paid? I think that is now maybe the conversation mm -hmm. uh, that uh, my brother Simon, as the chair of uh, the Suppliers Association, needs to sensitize suppliers. Because as um, the control of budget, my sister FCPA, Margaret, has said, most of the ineligible pending bills are arising because of verbal orders. And it becomes very uh, difficult for a new governor to authorize pending bills to be paid. Because uh, you also have a responsibility, a fiduciary responsibility on accountability. You can't just pay pending bills without documentation. The next thing, you'll be writing statements in ESCC. So that's a kind of catch-22 position. But we need to sensitize our will-be suppliers that lets the due process be followed. Then you'll be very certain of getting paid. Okay. In Kakamega, we have actually made sure that documentation cannot be compromised on procurement process. Right. And you're speaking about uh, verbal orders. To me, that sounds like it's in the ballpark of corruption. Speak to us about that. Isn't this corruption? And aren't county governments now meant to go deeper and deal with the corruption? Because some of these claims might have, some of these people, even if they were not very well sensitized, they must have been enabled by someone within the auspices of the county or whatever national, organ, national government uh, entity they're dealing with. Uh, definitely, uh, verbal orders amounts to high-level corruption. And that is why um, when we are looking at corruption prevention strategies, that is one of the things that um, I urge my fellow colleagues to put in place. As I said in Kakamega, we don't have verbal orders, and that is why we don't have a, a, a serious problem on pending bills. Yeah. Because definitely when you are given a verbal order, that is a replica for corruption and the, the, the possibility of, of being paid are remote. Right, right, right. This is true. And um, just to bring in the control of budget, um, uh, she led us down this road, which is a very important element of that. But also, let's talk to us, um, Margaret, about corruption. When we see suppliers chaining themselves to buildings, just trying to get themselves heard, it means there's something they have lost and they had placed the trust in some of these entities hoping to get profit out of their dealings with government. Speak to us about the levels of corruption, what can be done, what needs to be done and your take about solutions when we look at this matter. Okay, it's true that uh, corruption plays quite a role in terms of uh, uh, these suppliers who don't get paid and, and, uh, and those whose payments are delayed completely. Now, there is one scenario that I wanted us also to look at. When, when suppliers are carrying out big orders, say works, let's say they are, they are, they are carrying out uh, the construction of a building or a road, they expect that they are going to, to be part paid so that they continue this job to completion. However, what has been happening is that if they fail to get payment on certificates, it means then that they cannot move ahead to complete the full transaction. So usually, these are the kind of payments, when they are submitted uh, as full payments, then you will find the county saying, you know, the work was not completed, 
and so it cannot be paid. So this, uh, those are part of the ineligibles. So then you have to ask, at, at what point did things go wrong? Because if the supplier was not paid based on the uh, partial certificate, they are not able to continue to complete the whole works. Secondly, there are counties where I know suppliers are asked to pay monies up front, even before they start the jobs that they have tendered for. What then it means is that these suppliers have got to go to banks, borrow money, and probably make that down payment so that they can even get the job. So if they don't get paid, then at the end of the day, you can see that it is a triple problem because they cannot pay the first amount that they used to get the job. Then they are not paid according to the partial certificates. And then at the end of the day, they are not paid for the full invoice. So there is corruption at several levels if, if we look at that scenario that i'm talking about now if we say how can we stop this indeed uh, i hear both of my colleagues both mr gichuki and uh, governor fernandez have have both uh, looked at the, the the whom we should hold accountable at the end of the day I wouldn't want to generalize this because uh, we look at the problem. There are those problems that occur at the beginning of the work. There are those that occur in the middle and there are those that occur at the very end. So I, I don't think the solution would be one, one size that fits all. We have to look at the various causes and say, for instance, what do we do with uh, low levels of uh, revenue collection? What do we do about uh, the record keeping? What do we do about completion? Also, completion of the work is a big problem. So at the end of the day, uh, from where I sit, I'm saying that each of us has got to pull their own weight so that at the end of the day, the results can be seen. Nobody has all the answers. We all must work together. And Simon, while uh, um, the other speakers were at some point when the other speakers were speaking, you were shaking your head in this agreement. Um, the control of bodies has talked about the broken chain uh, when the, the county eventually says, but that job was not completed. Speak to us about the challenges on the part of the supplier <coughs> that would make that eventuality happen and then also react to the other. Okay. Number one, I'm going to talk about the correlation mm. between pending bills and the, 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 the entire ecosystem. Yes. Most of the times when you're given a contract, there's a high probability that there'll be a financier. That financier will either be an equity holder or a debt holder. Yes. Yeah. So that's where the banks come in, mm -hmm. and the financial intermediaries, mm -hmm. circles and, and their likes. So when you get an LSO from a county or from a national government, and you're supplying, at the point of getting the contract and everything, everything is okay. And there's a hope that once I do the work right, I'll be paid. Mm -hmm. And that's why the financial intermediary will ask you for a collateral and finance you because you'll be paid. They're not asking you for a collateral so they can auction it. They are so sure you will be paid. But because of finance rules and the, and the, and the lending rules, they will need a collateral. That's why they ask for the, for the asset that you have. Yes. Now, there comes the biggest problem is that no one, and, and, and I think uh, I support what uh, Governor Fernandez is saying, mm -hmm. if you are in a county that set processes right at the start, sure. the problems affecting other counties may not be known to you. Because from the point of view, if you ask suppliers, because we discuss, Kakamega is a case study. Everything is smooth. Yeah. 
if you are to give them a scum pending bill sorting processes give them a 90 mm -hmm. doing very well but why is it billion, but, but why is it Nairobi but why has that been done yeah. because from the first time mm -hmm. they got a governor who was a manager yeah. who understood public finance right it was smooth to get it done the other counties that basically elected political heads with no understanding of, of public finance. That's where the problem started. Okay. Now, if you're looking at the biggest problem we're having is because everyone's saying a supplier killed themselves. One, the depression came because everyone was after you because you borrowed money. Yeah. So are we addressing the fact that these suppliers did not borrow money to go for entertainment. They borrowed money to fund a project that was not if was that was effective but the payment never came through mm -hmm. another thing we are discussing is about documentation very good i've not had any public official in the last 10 years incarcerated purely because documentation got lost or the registry banned because mm -hmm. you have to address this thing because the other thing we are looking we are addressing here is was the documentation done right mm -hmm. yes so we need to ask ourselves two questions number one if the documentation is available from A to Z, and you're saying the process is inefficient, then two people must face the ESCC, the public servant and the supplier. Yeah. Because they're both conduit in this case. That's why I asked earlier on, how possible is it for me to go supply dustbins to Kakamega without anyone in the county? In the first yeah. 2013, 2017, mm. we didn't have a lot of structures in the county. So mm. it, was a, it would have been possible. Right now, we are at a level whereby everyone who supplies public mm -hmm. will either consult us or consult other people and they'll have knowledge okay. of how public uh, service works and we all mention one thing lso what does that basically mean mm -hmm. that the entire process was done until they came to the last point of one document and that's why it's very good to understand how does the government works once you understand how it works mm -hmm. you will know when you're holding a document it is supported by processes and other documentation are, were they rightly done? So when we say we are not honoring a charge, mm -hmm. honoring a certain uh, a bill, then we come back to the question, that document you're holding to us for payment, who signed it? Yeah. Who was personally liable? What document did they use to generate it? Mm -hmm. If the documents are missing, take that person to court because they're basically stealing from Kenyans. Yeah. And if, if we look at it from that aspect, when Madame was saying, every year we have pending bills increasing, no one will pay them. It's me and you, the taxpayers. So we should also be helping the government tell them, no, 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 this pending bill, let them be audited. And if someone has made a charge on, co on a pending bill and it's corrupt, take them to ECC. It reduces your money as Kenya that mm -hmm. you'll pay next year. Mm -hmm. But as long as we hide behind the, this whole facade of uh, so-and-so, these bills are ineligible, so we are not going to pay this. So who is going to pay? These guys will go to court, they'll be awarded. Okay. But can we just honestly sit down and ask ourselves, where did the problem start? Because I don't think pending bills started with the county governments or with the, with the 2013. No, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they were there in small scale. But people got aware, they could supply, and they came in. So we will always blame corruption. We'll always blame documentation. No one takes responsibility. No one has ever sat down. We've, we, we've had governors who's been in office, like my friend Baraza, he mm -hmm. cannot fire anyone mm -hmm. because the county is doing well. The counties that are doing badly, my question is, have we had a governor who stood up and said, this chief officer, this finance director, this CFO, this head of procurement, I'm, being, I'm firing them mm -hmm. and I'm forwarding the name to ESCC because they signed documents that were fraudulent. Because the honest point is, once a document is there, it has a support. Yeah. Question is, are we taking personal responsibility? Mm -hmm. Because Madame will only go to work on what was presented to her. Ninety percent of the original documents to support that final document are with the counties. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? And that brings us to the other issue that uh, the governor was saying: if we need to automate, we need to very well streamline records management and very well work on our processes. Right. If we don't do that, we'll be here next year discussing more the pending same. bills. Yeah, the same thing. Yes. Yeah. She earlier on spoke about the broken chain when you're told this work was not finished, but then there's a problem with the funding. Explain this to us and how this is making it a problem for suppliers. But it's okay. Mm -hmm. Funding may go because mm -hmm. we, we I, I again appreciate the fact that we are a third, country, a third mm -hmm. world country. Mm -hmm. 
maybe a certain percentage of our budget will be funded, or we will hope it will get funding, mm. external sources. At times it doesn't come through, so we may not have the money to finish projects. Mm. But were they awarded? Yes. When money comes in, do we continue? Or at the point where it was done, do we ever get a certification of this work was done 70% or 60%, pay that person to 60%? Right. If you gave me a 40-kilometer road to build, and I did, I, I did 20, and because you're you paying in phases, mm. then at phase 20, uh, 20 kilometers, money was not available exactly. or there was a natural calamity and everything. Mm. This 50% done, can I get a certification and I get paid? When things come back to normal, we go on. Right. Otherwise, we can't keep saying that everything happens and we stop at that point. But no one sits down to say, mm -hmm. in the event that this person did this work, mm -hmm. what is the commensurate pay they get? Mm -hmm. The same thing with supplies. I think the biggest joke we have is, you supply goods this year, you're not paid. The same goods are ordered next year, but you've not been paid. Right. And that supplier gets paid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you are not paid mm -hmm. for your previous year. Yes. I, I, I get that. Um, uh, we are running out of time, unfortunately. There's so much to talk about, but I'd like to focus more on the solution bits. Now, Governor Fernandez Barraza, it's been said that since Kakamega is very clean, you might not very, be very uh, understanding of some of these problems that the other counties are facing. But I do believe that given that Kakamega has gotten right, you might have great insights on possible solutions that could put an end to this. Even for your fellow governors who are having um, almost 100 uh, billion shillings in uh, pending bills. Speak to us about what you foresee could be a solution to this problem. Uh, there are quite a number of solutions that uh, I want to propose. Number one, of course, Yeah, we seem to have lost his connection, but we shall circle back to Governor uh, Fernandez Barraza once we get that connection sorted out. But I'd like to bring in also uh, Margaret uh, Nyakango, who is the controller of budget. You spoke about us all uh, being, bringing solutions to the table and not pointing fingers at one another. But as we look to solutions or look uh, forward to these things being solved, what else would you say would help put an end to this problem? Okay, I have to say once again that uh, there's nobody with all the answers. We all must check ourselves and say, how have we contributed to the problem? So when we go to the National Treasury, for instance, we have to say, how can we get the funds released more in, in a more timely manner so that the spending units can pay their bills on time? When you go to the spending entities, you have to check at the way the processes are done, the way the records are kept, and generally how the suppliers are treated. Even when you come to my office, you then have to ask, have we monitored and advised the counties in a timely manner? So I'm saying once again that all of us are in it. Even you, the media, you are also in. Because if you don't do things like what we are doing tonight, then uh, the suppliers, the citizens don't get sensitized and they won't get to do the right thing. So we all need to pull our weight. Okay, we all need Thank to pull you. our weight. Okay, and uh, in, in the spirit of that, do you think it's necessary to have some sort of dialogue between suppliers and the, the, the people in power, the governors that you feel are failing in terms of governance? Do you feel dialogue to get a way forward is necessary aside from the other practical areas that you have talked about? Yes mm -hmm. and no. Okay. Dialogue is always the first uh, thing you go to in business. And um, what we've done is engage uh, either the counties or the institutions uh, involved, mm. basically having a, a discussion with the main person. In most cases, uh, having meetings with governors to find out why exactly are we having a problem with payment. Right. However, we have to agree to the fact that these are people's monies. So at some point, we'll have to sober up and remove mm -hmm. politics and come back to business mm -hmm. and agree that these people need to be paid. So what's the way forward? We can't keep pushing pay bills years on. 
Number two, we have to be alive to the fact that His Excellency took uh, action mm -hmm. and decided we are going to have a, a, a pending bills committee. And it will really help because yeah. at the end of the day, the government has to own up to debt, make it a fast charge and pay the suppliers. Mm -hmm. So the two things are very important to, to, to ensure things work. However, we also have to be honest that there are people who deliberately refuse to pay. Right. And there are governors who basically have an executive order in, in quotes that payments will only be done when they're authorized. Okay. So we have to get to the fact that we are a developing nation, but we've gone to, to a point where we need to let systems work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we don't let systems work, then we have a problem. And for those governors, they'll have problems because they don't get systems work, they don't pay supplies, they actually take money back to Treasury. Mm -hmm. I saw the counties you put here, two of them took money back to Treasury. Yes, they have pending at, bills. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Why did they do it? Because they feel entitled that we aren't going to pay this. We're not, and when you ask, they have no reason for not paying. That's why I'm talking about dialogue, because so that seems to be... Dialogue is when yeah. you're willing to sort a situation. Uh -huh. If you're not willing to sort a situation, you'll go to court. We have suppliers who are taking county government to court, but that has a a disadvantage on you because it means other governors now don't want to work with you. Uh -huh. So we are pushing for dialogue. We are actually hoping that there'll be a gazette notice soonest to operationalize uh, what His Excellency and the cabinet pushed mm -hmm. for the Penny Bills Committee. Mm -hmm. We will all sit down and push for that to work. Right. In the event it's not there, my call to every CEO, county secretary, chief officer, principal secretary is that every pending bill is attached to very critical things. One, mm. there are people working in those offices who supplied. In the event you don't pay companies, we close down companies. What is the ripple effect of closing companies? You increase black, you increase black tax. People, there are no many companies paying taxes. Mm -hmm. There are no people making a living. True. So we are basically taking our country back. Number yeah. two, mm -hmm. it has always been the norm that when you supply government worldwide, it's, an, it's a sure bet. You'll get paid. That's it. Now yeah. we're going to a point where you supply government of Kenya and you, on the internet, you tell everyone you supply government, the first thing they tell you is it's okay. It's <laughs> one of the 1,000 ways to die. Yeah. That we really sorry. want to get there. Yeah, yeah. Number three, mm -hmm. in, the, in the most countries, you go to school to study, to think of a solution, to sell oh, to the government yes. and make money. Mm -hmm. Now, who really wants their kid right now to finish school and start supplying government, if you're not sure, you'll get paid. That's true. So we will do dialogue, but we need to be live to the fact that we also need to get these processes done. Mm -hmm. If someone is asking for a fraudulent amount from the counties, mm -hmm. please sue them, right. for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. Sue the ESCC, D DPP, take them to court, They're and actually happiness. they should be a percentage. Yeah. The last point, there was a bill that had been proposed of penalties if you don't pay on time. Mm -hmm. I can tell you the suppliers who are owed money in 2007, 2010 to now. Who exactly is going to pay that interest? It's me and you who are the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. So can we have personal liability such that if there's any interest of you not paying an amount purposely because you felt you should not pay and the money can go back to treasury, should personally liable because that is what we call personal liability. Yes. And if a third world country does not take charge of personal liability of whoever is in power, then we're in problems. Yeah, that sense of responsibility might keep people in check. Yes. Uh, that's what I'm hearing from you. Thank you so much. That is Simon Gishu. He is Secretary General Association of Public Suppliers. Earlier on, we had Governor Fukakamega, Fernandez Baraza. We lost his connection. We would, loved, we would have loved to get his take on solutions, given that Kakamega has gotten it right when it comes to these matters. And we also had the controller of budget, Margaret Nyakango, who also gave us her take on what the problem is and how every Everyone can chip in to ensure that suppliers are getting their dues and these bills are not piling. And that draws a conversation to a close. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Trix Ingado. Tonight, our sign language interpreter was Damien Evans. Do have yourself a great night ahead. <laughs>